and welcome to another Bonnie and Teddy video diary and in this one I want to take you back to the 7th and 8th of June of this year when we went away for a two night stay in Merseyside at the Premier Inn Ormskirk. In this video we'll be showing you around the hotel room we stayed in the board bases of our stay including all the food and drink options plus a few more details about the place as well. But first, let me tell you why we went there. What were we thinking? It was all in aid of Bunny's 51st birthday celebrations. And if you want to see the whole story as to why we went to this hotel, I guess you'll have to watch the mini series saga that we did, which includes this very trip and everything else to do with her 51st birthday. You will then without question understand our hotel choice. If you are new to the channel and you like hotel review videos, check out our other like-minded videos on our channel, which I will link in the description below. Whilst you're there, check out any of the other videos we do on our channel to see if you like them as well. Click subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of any other videos coming up on our channel. And if you do just happen to like any of these videos on our channel, give them a thumbs up, leave a comment, and even suggest where you'd like to see us go next. So going back to this hotel, the Premier Inn in Ormskirk, it's nearer to Scarisbrick than Ormskirk on this map, but I suppose Ormskirk is a bigger place to associate it with, and it does sound better than Scarisbrick. And it was in a central sort of location as to where the big birthday surprise was going to take place. So to get to the hotel from where we are, we got on the M6 at Junction 12, came off at Junction 26 onto the M58, came off the M58 at Junction 3 and onto the A570. And as you can see on the final map of this route, you go through Ormskirk to get to the hotel at Scarisbury. It's a bit like taking Ryanair to a city destination of your choice, but the plane actually lands about 30 miles away from that city at a random airport in the middle of nowhere. Now without further ado let's go and join us in our hotel room where I show you around it. Anyway we've just checked in this standard room let me just show you around it shall we. In through that door there you've got some hooks you've also got a fuse box I can only assume this is the main switch for the lights but we haven't actually tried it let's see what it does actually do and yes there's a light up there that's just come on the the main light there here we've got another light switch and that hasn't done anything other than oh that's switch the bathroom light on there and in fact we might as well go in here now and show you that it does come with a bath uh, towers on the rail there and then we have Bailey Sing Harding shower gel and it also doubles up as a shampoo. You've got your foot towel, the bath mats, or whatever you want to call it, shower mat, and the shower is right up there. And it looks as if it will be okay. We haven't tried it yet, we've only just checked it. There's the sink with ample mirror. <laughs> I like uh, using the old ample word there and then you've got this base nodding hand wash toilet is okay and the paper dispenser is quite literally there moving on out if you look at our radisson blue hotel tea and coffee facility portal it didn't have these did it it had the mirror that sort of came out of a side but if we switch this on just there it actually switches the lights on so you can actually make a cup of tea or coffee during the night or during the dark darker months shall we say so there's your tea and coffee facilities there you've got a plug which has also a hairdryer underneath here and I can only assume the other plug is for the kettle and you've got a bin a hanging space here with a compartments above that extra pillows maybe in this case there or maybe even a type of pillow different type of pillow then you've got this side thing here 
so I don't know what you'd put there. You, I don't know what you want you put there either, although we've put books there at the minute. And you've got more plugs there. And then you've got another plug there. And in comes the bunny with another bag here. <laughs> got some milk. Oh, you got some milk. Well done. Yeah. Featuring down onto the desk. There's always a desk, isn't there, with a chair in these sort of rooms. We've got two other plugs there. And then another two here, one housing this funny little lamp. The menu comes here for your food. We're on a breakfast and dinner rate this two nights. You've got uh, heating instructions, although I don't think we'll be using them today because it's quite warm. And that little console there does include a USB port, which is quite nice. The TV is Samsung. Uh, I can only assume it's just a general TV channels. Yeah, there's no port there. And on this side, I can't see any port there either. Uh, some nice artwork around the room. More artwork there. And then of course, what would a bedroom or a room, a hotel room be without the bed? And we've got a nice big, uh, what, king size would it be? And in addition to that, we have a sofa bed in the room, which is doubling up nicely as a sofa, quite literally. So it's, that's quite a nice addition. Uh, that sort of headrest, or whatever it is, sort of sinks into the gap between the piece of furniture and the window so i don't know where how you're going to play with that not sure whether we're going to be able to show you the the view but it is quite literally just a view of the car park and there we have it you want to come and shower okay. yes i've done the bathroom so you can go in there for a shower <laughs> what sort of can you say i think what is missing in the bathroom is uh, sanitary bags if somebody you know yeah. a lady is on this time of the month and she needs to put bits in so someone normally there is a plastic mm. a little not plastic they give you like a paper bag normally there is none there so i'm thinking maybe you get only the basic really mm. you get your yeah. um so, so normally there's yeah. also a glass uh, like a beaker in the bathroom in certain right. mm. but for i think for the price you've paid yes what you get we can't moan that much yeah you because know. it's near Southport town so you'll be spending most of your time in the right. seaside really uh, because it would be a very good place to be in terms of the sea. Return to the bed area, let's have a look at these lights. This light switch, oh in fact the left hand switch oh, it does the over the bed light, okay. The middle one is over the little sofa bed. I don't know how good it will be at night. And then the other one, the right hand one, is the over the bed. Little dot light there. Spotlight, I think they call them. Same the other side of the bed. One to operate the bedside light and one to operate the middle light there. And the other one to actually operate the middle light there. And as I say, I don't know how good the lights are at the minute because it's uh, still quite bright. There you go. That's the, the full tour then of the room. We were on a breakfast and dinner basis, which came to just £219, which we thought were pretty good. Well, I thought it was pretty good at the time. So it was a pretty good deal all round all things said because the food that came with it was pretty good indeed uh, the meals that are on this basis you go to the beef eater that's next door to the hotel it's quite literally on the other side of the car park it's a very pleasant place to eat at uh, nothing rowdy about it when we were there not busy at all you've got to be careful that one or two meals on your board basis are not on the menu of your board basis if you choose a certain dish there may be a supplement on top so watch out for those we paid no more than three pound extra on top of any dish we had oh 
And don't forget to take the meal ticket you get from reception when you check in because this then tells them in the restaurant that you're on that board basis and that the meals are legit. Uh, because we forgot about this ticket on the first night and got really frowned upon by the staff in the beef eater and they had to ring reception to find out whether we were legit and then it was all right. But that was after <laughs> <laughs> we'd actually eaten. So as I say, the food was very good on both nights. Really good selection to suit all tastes, including vegan and vegetarian options. And when you think you're in a beef eater, that's pretty good for a beef eater. And the desserts are just as good as any other part of the meal. So overall, really good meal all round. Well worth it. You won't be disappointed. Uh, your breakfast options are excellent as well. The basis we're on with dinner and breakfast, it's split between a continental and your cooked. You can have both and it's unlimited. Now you can see the items on the menu here as to the Continental, which is priced at $7.99 and the cook, cooked menu here, which is priced at $9.99, which in turn, it includes the Continental items as well anyway, um, with the $9.99 rate. Uh, the dry food spread for breakfast in the restaurant is cereals, bread items like toast, croissant, or all that sort of thing, along with juices of different types. And then you've got your tea and coffee station. And so it's an all nicely laid out little section of the restaurant. Uh, the hot food options, as you saw on the menu, uh, you actually order these with a waiter and so with this in mind we thought that we were getting a lot fresher food given to us this way uh, rather than you know how they are standing around in these metal big container things that you lift the lid up and then serve yourself with your scrambled eggs and beans and so forth so we preferred this way of being waited on better than the buffet style breakfast you get in say holiday inn and the bunny really enjoyed this part of the morning. Just a few other little things about the stay, about the hotel and its facilities. The parking is ample. Uh, it's nicely segregated away from the beef eater itself. Uh, the hotel is actually in two blocks. Our room was in the block with the reception desk in it. Our room was situated two flights of stairs up opposite the door at the top of the stairs and on, on the stairs well actually as you go in up the stairs it says go up on tippy toes to not to disturb the other guests in the room in their rooms but the thing were when you went up the stairs they creaked like crazy they were terribly creaky so you were never going to be quiet going up the stairs or down the reception we, we, we like the reception although it was small yeah it was nicely okay and you know the the desk itself was okay. Not a lot of room for people coming in and out through the main door, but what we liked about it was you know how you always have to go down from your room to get more milk, more tea and coffee and all this sort of thing? Well, the receptionist isn't always there at the time when you want that. And we very rarely, when we went down for meals or out of the hotel, generally speaking, there wasn't really a receptionist there all the time. So if you go down from your room to get your tea and coffee and milk and all this sort of thing for your room, it's out there on the side, out away from the desk on the side to help yourself through all these pigeonholes for the milk, tea and coffee. It was really well thought of, you know, in case somebody wasn't there. You could take as much as you like, really. Uh, one more thing to consider. The hotel website says in their list of facilities that it has a seaside location. So if you consider a five mile drive to the beach, uh, and we're talking about the beach car park at Southport. If you consider that as a seaside location, then fine. You know, I don't, I don't consider that at all. However, however, if I was to visit Southport again in the future, then I would consider this hotel to then go into Southport because there's the surrounding area as well as Southport itself. But it's not an out and out seaside 
resort hotel. For me, a seaside resort hotel is quite literally, when you come out the front door of the hotel, it's probably only 100 metres away, the sea. Um, you know, it's even be just across the road from the sea. <laughs> You know what I mean? You can get them, can't you, in various uh, seaside resorts in the UK. But there you go, guys. That's what we've got on this hotel. That's our look at the Premier Inn at Orms Kirk. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Uh, we do intend to travel again soon. We don't want to give it away as to where we're going, but it hopes to be something nicely exciting, particularly with the food. So please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing of that. In fact, those videos we hope to be posting late October, providing all goes to plan. In the meantime, take good care of yourselves and we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.